about five to 10% people who can actually make it to the top. Now, to make it to the top, it's really important that you sell your philosophy. And in our case, we've sold that, that philosophy in this manner. We say very clearly, listen, for the first 10 years that you're with us, please don't worry about your future beyond giving performance to your department, to your objectives, hence the concept of management by objective, objective criteria, you know, marking them twice a year. It's really important in the first 10 years of an associate's life in your group. It's much less important after 10 years. But for the first 10 years, he's got to be or she's got to be a performer. Whether it's in quality, then it's quality benchmarks. Whether it's in market, it's market benchmark. Whether it's in HR, how well he or she did with the training that we needed to impart. So in our case, if we are training 1,000 people a year out of 10,000, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. And not everybody can go to the same thing. But the second phase is the most important phase. As you go in your 10 years to your second phase, that's where we're looking for people who could potentially be good chief executives in the future. So we start making IDPs, which are these individual development programs. We start tracing the people who are the best in their first 10 years. And with that IDP and the feedback, it's a bit like the army. You get feedback. Not everybody makes it to staff college, right? Not everybody makes it to additional secretary. Now, these are institutionalized institution. <laughs> and you need to bring this in. And if you bring this in, You've just got to be careful that it's not becoming a bureaucracy. It's got to be done in a very nimble way. But if you get this and you get the top people getting together, so our 15 CEOs together with our advisory board, which means about 21 people sit annually and we look at all the performers in the group. And the HR rep comes in and tells us these are the people that need to be in our future succession plan. Now, once you have those, you can say that now these 10 year plus guys are gonna be our org organization builders. Means give them responsibility now. Which means they are ready to become general managers. And between years 10 and 20, depending on how good or bad they are, it could be any time. So we have a bunch of kids right now who joined us in the management trainee program in 2002 who are all general managers already. They're 37, 38 years old, and they're general managers, right? Which means they're primed in the next four to five years to actually become COOs. Now, getting them aligned, again, it's very scientific. So there's science behind all of this stuff, which HR consultancy companies, multinational HR folks know very well. Science is the easy part. It's blending that science with the art, which is the tough part, which suits your group, your DNA. Now, blending that together into an organization builder, you've now got people who are ready to do the tough thing, which is strategy. Sitting at age five in the company and trying to make the company strategy is tough. It's really tough, especially if you're joint ventures. Your partners don't respect you. So getting you to that phase where you're actually talking about company financials, cost down, product lineup, pricing, HR strategy, necessi necessitates that you have experience. It's really important. When Zuckerberg gets Sheryl Sandberg in, he gets experience. And that's what makes it happen. So in our case, taking a manager from a performer stage to an organization builder stage to a strategist stage is now a clear path to developing him or her. It's really important. If you don't have this philosophy and you just cut and paste management books, it's not gonna work. It's, same thing's gonna happen to you as it happened to our founder in the 80s. Cut and paste doesn't work. 
You've got to get the four soft parts right for your group. Now, last but not least, I think what's really has hit me over the years is that, so where does that leave us with the word institutionalize the group? Now, once you've done all the HR stuff, you're hoping that your group or company has migrated from a team into an organization. But taking your organization and making it into an institution requires a lot more to do. It requires a lot more to do on both sides. If you're a family business, the professional managers won't respect you unless the family is institutionalized. How do you institutionalize the family? One, you've got to make sure that they are not direct owners of listed companies. You've got to take the family out of owning shares in listed companies. Their share shareholding needs to be in an institution, which is privately held. So everybody is aligned. And there's no blackmailing that I'll sell the shares if you don't listen to me. Number two, you've got to announce a succession in the family. So in our generation, we got together and we announced it. Our chairman, myself, and Sanat Qureshi Saab, we sat down and we said, selflessly take yourself out. So I took myself out of the running. Number two brother was made the group president. And the number four brother is 20 years younger than the number two brother, and we said, you are the you know, tentatively selected president, we're gonna groom you. And announced. So professional managers know who, who we're dealing with. It's a, it's a family, is it a family business or is it a business family? The Quants of BMW are a business family. The Toyotas of Toyotas are a business family. Are you a family business or a business family? That we needed to do. And the hardest part of that is you've got to pay each of the family member well in terms of dividends. So the company and the groups are doing well. If they do well, the family takes care of itself. Luckily in our case, we institutionalized the family in 1997. We made a payoff to each family member. Here's your inheritance in terms of liquidity. This is your role. And for the next generation, we made it clear that if you come in, there's a board, selection board, that's going to take you up or not. And in terms of the group itself, professional managers, it was very important to hear what they wanted to say. Is it the Shirazi group or is it the Atlas group? And for that, we needed to go back to them. And we went back to them and we actually, over the last decade, asked them what is important to you over what we've done. So if we can go to the last slide. So we actually came up with something that they wanted us to do. They say, yeah, Honda has its way, Toyota has its way, BMW has its way. Why can't we have the Atlas way? So we said, okay, if that's important to you. And everybody said, no, it's important to us. We want it written down, and everybody carries it in their wallet, this small little card. Now, it sounds a bit paranoid, you know, a little too organized, but I'll tell you something, it works, because you get buying. So what have they told us to do? So in terms of Atlas culture, they said, listen, value for time. 8.30 means 8.30. This conference starting at 9 means 9. Leaving for home on time. Spending time with family is important to us. So write everything down. So we wrote everything down. And now when a class comes in, management training class, it's unbelievable. It's these Atlas guys who are telling the newcomers, this is what we're all about. Atlas systems, what does it mean? How do we measure people? They said, well, we better write these things down. It's a work in progress. But the important part is, believe it or not, this is shared value. So while we might have done style, it's important. Respect, recognition, reward. We haven't won, 
We've done skill, style, star. We haven't won. We're not an institution yet. But the day all of this is embedded the way it is in Toyota, the way it is in the civil service, the way it is in the army, perhaps not this generation, but the next generation might be in a position to be called an institution. The problem of Pakistani businesses is that we've done well up to now, but not a single Pakistani group or company right now can be called an institution. That still belongs to the multinationals. That's the leap we need to make in these coming days and years to get that. And it's going to happen through a focus on HR, system, method. With that, thank you very much. I hope I didn't take too long. Thank you very much, Mr. Shirazi, for the great words of wisdom. I'd like to request Mr. Mohammed Zahid, the CEO of Mitchells, to please come on stage and uh, hand over a memento uh, to recall us and everyone in the house today. See if Mitchells, Mr. Mohammed Zahid. And now is the time to applaud. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. It's all about leadership. It's all about pipelines. And uh, there's so many wonderful things that one can take away from what Mr. Shirazi had to say in creating institutions. And I really, really, really hope, and I truly echo what he's just said, that may Pakistan create lots of organizations that are truly institutions in their own right and therefore go international. Um, but it is one of the elements of leadership that I do wish to remind us and rephrase it, if I may, with his permission, is to deliberately make yourself replaceable. Now, that is a true sign of a leader. Um, Mr. Niazi earlier on came and quoted Mr. Mandela, and another quote from Mr. Mandela would say the difference between a successful politician and a successful leader is where a successful politician will be thinking about your next election, but the leader will be thinking about your next generation. And that's truly where the pipelines will come through. And again, I will be saying this until my mouth goes dry. With all those HR wallahs sitting in front of me, that's truly our job, to be able to make sure the pipeline remains smooth and we're creating next generations. Uh, I'd like to request for our next particular uh, keynote speech, Mr. Faham Ahmed, from hu the Human Resource Director from Pepsi Cola, to come up on stage and talk about building competencies today for the workforce of tomorrow. Any round of applause, Mr. Ahmed. Thank you very much, PSCD. Um, thank you for giving uh, me the opportunity. Now, engage with meaning and build competencies for tomorrow. So I'm going to build what Amir Saab has mentioned, what Shiraji Saab has mentioned. But what we need to do, we need to ha have a separate lens, a different lens to look at the competencies which we'll be needing tomorrow. But before we go there, and if technology works, thank you. So, so before we go there, the traditional model is that you have to have proven um, results, either it be business results or people results. And then uh, during your career, you, you need to acquire functional excellence, um, you need to know the business code, acquire critical experiences, and get the mom teacher join. They will get you different opportunities, and you will grow in your career. But Saval hai kuch, or Saval ye hai, the competencies which were very in in 20th century, are they valid today? So we'll have a, and we're also aware of the fact that things around us are changing very rapidly, very fast, very dynamic. So, if I ask you this, how many people have been able to tell you about this picture? Okay, how many people have been able to tell you about this picture? Can you tell me what it is? Huh? Telephone exchange. Telephone exchange. Telephone exchange. So, in the 60s, uh, one of the professions 
जहाँ पे बहुत बहुत पॉपुलर था एक कॉम्पिटेंस थी आपने कोई ओवरसीज कॉल करनी है आप बुक करते थे और तीन मिनट के बाद जो है वो कॉल मिलती थी टेलीफोन एक्सचेंज ओके सो टेलीफोन एक्सचेंज आपने देखा इसी तरीके से टाइप राइटर एंड टेलीफोन सेट दिस टेक्नोलॉजी इज देर एनी मोर नो पाकिस्तान में टेक्निकल एजुकेशन कॉलेजेस के अंदर टाइपिंग यूज टू बी अ प्रोफेशन टाइपिंग इंप्रूविंग टाइपिंग स्पीड यूज टू बी अ स्किल विच पीपल यूज टू अक्वाय and people used to get jobs based on the typing speed they have today this is this is not required anymore kyun isko replace kar diya mobile phone ne today we have a technology on our palms hamare paas access hai na sirf voice ki data ki internet ki balki financial services ki bhi koi yahan pe baitha jiske paas mobile phone na ho koi yahan pe baitha jo whatsapp na karta ho jo apna online banking na istemal karta ho anybody hai Thank you, sir. I, I I need to spend some time with you after after this session. Please uh, clap for the gentleman. इसी तरीके से I would like to show you picture um, Ford Company assembly line, early 20th century, one of the highest paying um, unskilled or semi-skilled job, five dollar a day. At that us us work the kriban two sawa two dollar milte the ghante ke. and so many people used to used to do this job this has been replaced by this today is automation today is robots today is technology kya bana un tamam jobs ka jo ke us assembly line pe kaam karti thi okay similarly another example amazon aap sab waqif hai amazon se they have excellent automated uh, storage and retrieval system you place an order they'll they'll guarantee delivering it in a very short span of time you know what their next promise is The next promise is Amazon Prime Air. What they are saying is that they are going to do delivery with drones. The moment you will place order, 30 minutes afterwards you will have the order at your home, at your doorstep. Isn't this amazing? But think about what will happen to all those jobs who are right now doing the logistics and warehouse and transport and drivers. All of them are going to be obsolete. Now, similarly, few few more pictures just to uh, make a point. Maps, we don't use these maps anymore um, these days. It's everything in Google and uh, floppy disks. I can see um, my generation also sitting here. So, uh, you know, for uh, for us, this was a big thing in 80s, uh, or I would say. Moving on, similarly, um, still photography is not is gone, and. people who were attached with this profession are not required uh, their skill set is not required anymore televisions and how many of you remember such televisions yeah aap mein se ye jo piche log baithe hain aap mein se kitno ko yaad hai ki they used to be a television jiske aap pass almari hoti thi and used to put a lock yeah so now now it's it's gone now we have a smart tv so even my my little daughter who is just uh, four she knows how to go to youtube and uh, find a program so gone with the days and and and, and technology gets obsolete it's same with the, with these cassettes how many of you but i'm and i'm not doing any stereotyping please i have a huge respect for female talent but how many of you do take um sewing knitting uh, as a skill today how many of you actually go there this one person two please put a thank you very much you are keeping the tradition alive thank you very much yeah it this is not required we we normally we don't spend time time on this now this is very clear that we have to change and why because cracks are very very um evident if we don't change our skill set is going to be obsolete the competencies we have today the competencies we are acquiring today are not going to be valid tomorrow So 50 years down the road, there will be different skill set which is altogether required. Now, before we understand, Kiji, हमें कौन सी skill चाहिए? आपको कौन सी skill चाहिए? Let me do an exercise with you. Let me let me divide your whole life into three stages, and we call it a three-stage life breakdown. And I, and you would say education, experience, and retirement. अगर मैं आपसे सवाल पूछूं कि आप में से कितने लोग roughly एक बताएं कि तालीम किस उम्र तक तालीम हासिल करते हैं? 20, 25, 30, किस उम्र तक आप तालीम हासिल करते हैं अपनी जिंदगी में यस ऑल द लाइफ यस एकेडमिक एजुकेशन यूनिवर्सिटी कॉलेज बिफोर यू स्टार्ट वर्क 
25? Yeah, around 25? Okay. Kaam kab tak karna hai? What are your plans? Kab tak kaam karna hai? 50? Yeh zara 40 saal tak jinnoh ne kaam karna hai, zara haath kada kar lein. Right. Jinn logo ne 50 saal tak kaam karna hai, woh haath kada kar lein. Yeh 60 saal wale tak haath kada kar lein. Okay, very good. और इसके बाद इसके बाद क्या करेंगे रिटायरमेंट के बाद क्या करेंगे आफ्टर 60 आराम करेंगे आराम किसने कहा जी आई कम टू दैट इफ यू मूव ऑन सो ऑफ कोर्स यू हैव यू हैव एजुकेशन अराउंड 25 टू 27 इयर्स यू हैव वर्क एनीवेयर बिटवीन 40 टू 60 65 इयर्स एंड सिमिलरली यू विल हैव रिटायरमेंट um 60 आफ्टरवर्ड्स नाउ इफ आई शेयर समथिंग दैट 50% ऑफ पीपल हु आर सिटिंग हियर राइट नाउ यू आर गोइंग टू लिव अप टू 100 इयर्स 50% of people sitting here, you're going to live up to 100 years. So what you need to do is, in order to, aapne kaha retirement pe aram karenge, explorer banenge, jo bhi aap activity karenge, agar aapne 100 saal tak zinda rehna hai, aur ye research kehti hai. So people born in uh, 80s, they are going, uh, in, in 1940s, they are going to live up to 80, 80s, 50% of them. And this is basically, this is a research, primarily be, uh, due to the fact that medical science ne itni tarakhi kar liye. Uh, we are also very conscious about our health. Now, ye kuch data hai, statistics hai, and you could also see the source. Um, ke Japan mein, for example, 107 uh, ki ek average uh, life hogi. Now, the question is, now, the question is, if, you, if you're going to work up to 70, you will have around 124,000 productive hours. So you're going to work 60 hours a, a week, 52 weeks in a year, that comes around 3,000. So you're working up to for 40 years, starting from 30 to 70, you'll have around 124,000 productive hours. If you're going to work, if you have a 100-year life, you're going to work up to 80 or even 100. So what are you going to do with those additional productive hours? Kya ye aisa ho sakta hai ki aap 25 saal tak to education hasil kare? और साठ में आप रिटायर हो जाएं पैंतीस साल के बाद और फिर चालीस साल की आपकी रिटायरमेंट हो डस डेट मेक सेंस वुड वुड डू डू यू वांट योर रिटायरमेंट टू बी ब्लेस्ड और कर्स्ड या थैंक यू सो पहली चीज तो ये कि साठ साल तक कोई भी यहाँ पे जो बैठे हैं साठ साल तक आपने काम नहीं करना योर एस्पिरेशन शु um, with all due respect, I'm, I'm also here. Uh, I, I'm still confused whether I'm a baby boomer or a Generation X, but maybe somewhere in, in between. But this is, this is, we all know, we are all aware. So I'm going to share a story. I'm going to share a story of, uh, um, you know, this uh, three different generations. The first one is Yaqub and Najma. So Yaqub and Najma, jo hai, wo uh, 1940 and 1950 ke or uh, inka a classic family structure tha. They had, uh, Yaqub had two major transition, uh, transitions into, uh, into work life, going into work and out of work, and that's it. Uh, 